Hey church family, I'm so glad to be with you tonight. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I'm so excited to be in your homes this week of Christmas. Um, I'm thankful for you. I'm, I hope that you're getting to take some time off work and spend with your family and enjoy um, everything that this season brings. Even with COVID still around, this is still a very special time. And I want to talk tonight about briefly about a topic that is so, it's near and dear to my heart for a way that you're probably not thinking. It's near and dear to my heart because it's something that I struggle with. It's near and dear to my heart because it's something that if Kyla gets on me for one thing more than anything, it's probably this topic. And I know that there are many of you that can relate to this as well. I want to talk tonight about the idea of rest. Talk about the idea of rest. Now, if you worshiped with us on Wednesday night last week, you remember me telling you that this week and next are just going to be kind of devotionals. This is not really a full class. It's not going to be that long, but it is going to be something both tonight and next week are going to be things that I think are really going to challenge you. So I want you to take the more abbreviated time and really spend some of that extra time thinking about this preparing to put this into practice. If you look in the New Testament book of Mark, chapter 6 and verse 31, he says, He said to them, Come away by yourself to a secluded place and rest a while. If you think about the idea of rest, it has become almost a, a bad word and it's certainly become a lost practice in our modern society. You know, somewhere along the line, as we have have grown and evolved and, and, and progressed as a society, we've exchanged a value on, on rest and relaxation and family time and things with this, this pace that is unsustainable for anyone. You know, we look in our world today and it's almost a thing of pride for many that, you know, look how much I can get done, look how busy I am, look at how many appointments I have, look at how many calls I can make in a day, look at how many deals I can get done, look how many I can do this and this and this and this. All the while, our bodies are physically degrading. Usually the people that talk, you know, and are so proud of how much they can get done in a day are usually the ones in the absolute worst health. And we think about our families and we think about, you know, the family dynamics are breaking down right in front of our very eyes because to do all of these things that we're so proud of, you know, we have to work more. We have to spend more time away. We have to spend more time on the phone. You know, even when we sit down to have dinner, we got our phones, you know, glued to our face trying to get more work done. And, you know, again, this is something that's near and dear to my heart because, Certainly, I don't think it's as bad as some, but but you all know, if you know me personally, you know that I like to go at 10,000 miles an hour, and you know that's a fault many times, and, and Kyla is probably the first to have to remind me that I have to slow down um, because I, I like to stay busy. I like to get things done. And, you know, so I've fallen into this trap many times of really viewing rest as a negative thing, that if I need to take back and rest for a minute, that there must be something wrong. I'm not doing it well enough. So this is something that I can speak to personally. But we look into scripture and we see multiple times that even Jesus himself went and valued rest. He went into a secluded place and and recouped. You know, again, he was God, so he didn't need rest on the, the deity side of him, but he was man too, and he recognized the need there. So here's how this all applies, and this is why I saved it for this week, because almost everybody except for my brother who's a firefighter and he has to work on Christmas and I know that there are many you know nurses and some things like this that may have to be out and working but by and large most of you have a few days off uh, surrounding Christmas and I know many others will take additional vacation days and um, and things like this so the, the vast majority of you that are gonna be hearing this tonight are gonna have a few days surrounding right now to be off to be away from work and I want to challenge you to utilize this time of rest. I want to challenge you from a spiritual perspective to take some time and shut down all of the other things. All the work things that you feel like you have to get done, put it aside. Leave the laptop closed. You know, if you can bear it, turn your phone off for a couple days and really refocus your efforts on spending time with your family, spending time maybe even in seclusion by yourself, in, in prayer, in study. Even if you don't do prayer or study, just being quiet for a moment and allowing your body and your mind to recover. You know, we're, we're about to enter into a new year. And this is my challenge for you as you enter into a new year is 
are you willing to reincorporate and put a value on rest? Not just once a year, not just when you can get time off work, but making rest a part of your daily routine. That when you come home from work, again, I'm not saying that, you know, once you come home that work cannot have, you know, there are things that come up. Maybe you need to take a call. Maybe you need to send an email. I'm bad about that. Um, you know, almost anybody from Central has probably received an email from me at some point um, in my time here late in the evening because I'm a night owl. That's just kind of how I work. But So I'm not saying that none of that can happen, but are you willing to value rest? So maybe when you come home um, during the day, if you get home at 6 o'clock, from 6 till 7.30, no work is being done. You do not touch an electronic device. You eat dinner with your family. You talk with the family, get the kids in bed, and then if you need to do a little bit of work, so be it. But value time, value rest, and the value that it brings to your body, to your mind, and to your spirit. You know, a little bit of the context of Mark chapter 6 is they had been preaching and teaching and they had been going around and and quite honestly, the, the, the road has been tough. You know, they had been refused places. People had said, we don't care what you have to say. They had been ran out of town. And so Jesus is gathering his group together. And this is where we see him say in Mark chapter 6, he said, he said to them, come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a while. And you know what's interesting about this is this was not really the way we read it. This was not a suggestion. This was not a, you know, a friendly, you know, just kind of nudge of Jesus saying, you know, if you feel like it, come and rest a little bit. This was a command from their Savior saying, you must go by yourself and rest for a little bit. Go and be and recover. Because he recognized the importance of this for them and for their longevity moving forward. You know, I know many of us, and I've heard this from people, I've even felt this way from time to time of feeling, you know, guilty almost of if I slow down, am I being lazy? If I, if, if I slow down, am I not being my most efficient self or whatever you might want to phrase it as. So I want to challenge you as you enter into the new year, as you have a couple days here, um, hopefully right now and in, in, in the days to come, you have some time off. Consider thinking about this idea of rest and valuing it and, and making it a part of your everyday life. We already read Mark chapter 6. I want to read to you two more verses. Exodus chapter 33 and verse 14. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And Psalm 62 and verse 1 says, Truly my soul rests in God. My salvation comes from Him. You know, quiet time is not a bad thing. Rest is not a dirty word. You know, there, again, we, we've so associated our value with the world with how much we can get done. You know, you, you in your mind are a better, more valuable worker to your employer if you can get more done. You are seen as, as higher up and, and more prestigious to your peers if you're able to get more done. If everybody else can do 10 calls in an hour, you can do 15 and you feel better about that. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with being the best. There's nothing wrong with striving for excellence. There's nothing wrong with being valued by people around you. But when it comes at the detriment of your personal physical self with your mental self, your spiritual self, and those around you because your family is suffering from it, your friends are suffering from it, then it becomes a problem. And I want to encourage you is let this be the start of a new you. As 2020 comes to a close with so much garbage that has come in 2020, leave your bad habits with 2020. Leave the bad habit of coming home and continuing working and, and putting your values value stemming it from how much you can get done. Leave that in 2020 and start new in 2021, recognizing the things that God values, which is you, your family, your connection to him, and all of those things are benefited by you stopping and slowing down from time to time and recharging so that you can be a better servant of his. Guys, I'm so excited to get to worship with you tonight. I hope this has been a blessing to you as we continue to move forward in this fun week. I hope you have an awesome time uh, with your family. This upcoming Sunday, we won't be here. Um, Clay Johnson will be filling in for me. I hope that you'll be here at Central on the 27th to see uh, the Johnson family and, and, and get to worship together. And I look forward to being with you here um, in a week or so at the beginning of the new year as we start a new year together. We'll have a new theme. We'll have a new sermon series. Lots to start, and I can't wait for it. I can't wait to see you there.